Well, my goodness, how about that? It just went right on this evening. And how are you all tonight? Praise God. Oh, I did a little live stream check a little earlier and everything seemed to go pretty well. So we are plunging into our discussion. Hallelujah. About is a life of wellness possible? And how do you Well, there I just had one little stream interruption. So now I'm back again. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for your peace tonight that passes all understanding. Thank you, Father, for those that join me tonight, that they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand. Holy Spirit, you are the wonderful teacher. And I thank you that you use God's word to teach these hearts. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to read again tonight our little portion from Gordon Lindsay's book on the Bible, Secret of Divine Health. We've usually been doing this on Thursday night for quite a while now. Adjusting my light there just a little bit. Gordon Lindsay is the founder of Christ for the Nations Institute in Dallas, Texas, and they have trained and sent out missionaries and ministers all over the world for many, many years now. The Bible Secret of Divine Health Having more than 30 years of experience in divine healing ministry, I have observed one circumstance which I believe is the main hindrance to receiving permanent deliverance from sickness. Christians, even those who believe in divine healing, tend to accept occasional sickness and getting healed as normal, as God's order for life. But it is made clear in the Word of God that it is not divine healing, but divine health, which is God's intended plan for his children. Hallelujah. One hindrance, the main hindrance to receiving permanent deliverance from sickness. Christians, even those who believe in divine healing, tend to accept occasional sickness and getting healed as normal as God's order for life. And we'll just stop there because that is the main idea that he's wanting to get across. Across that we do not need to accept occasional sickness and then getting healed as the norm for life. That God's best is not that process of sickness and getting healed. God's best is wellness, that you live a life of wellness. Now tonight we're talking about number two session in hot wiring healing. If you don't have a copy of the notes that I'm going to be using tonight, I encourage you to go over to my Bible school and windsorbibleschool.com. I think it is .com or .org, I can't remember now and download the PDF of these notes. A lot of you, I asked a question yesterday or the day before, the day before yesterday, I believe it was, because I was interested in what conditions that you were actually dealing with. And the reason that I asked is because I want to give a demonstration to you to teach you 
how to minister healing through the spoken word, you speaking the word, and you laying hands on yourself, and also you listening to the voice of your good shepherd, because he will give you specific directions in how to just do this little tweak or that little thing to see your healing functioning fully in your body. How this series came about, hot wiring healing. Um, <clears throat> now these are notes from last week, but there's some things that I want to go over with you in them. And I'm not going to get, and I may, I don't think I'm going to get in tonight to necessarily speaking to any of the specific situations that you submitted. Yesterday, I posted a list of them on the, our page here of the different illnesses that people were dealing with. And I went through your comments and I compiled a list and I put the basic summary of it on yesterday's page. I have prayed about it and I just felt like the Lord doesn't want me to get fully into the demonstration part yet because we need to lay just a little bit more foundation here before we do. Um, the series, how to, the phrase, you have to hot wire healing, Jesus gave to me when I asked him, I said, Lord, what can be done to help people? People that have very serious situations where their health is concerned. They have pain, they have mobility issues, they have other things, and they're to the point of having little or no help where medical science is concerned. People are desperate and ready to give up the fight for health, and they need immediate solutions and are not able for various reasons to put in hours of time listening to videos or reading materials on divine healing. So I said, Lord, what can be done to help these people? And I heard the Spirit say to me, you have to hotwire healing. I said, how? And this is the answer. This is the immediate solution to work the healing that you need. I said, how? He said, you have to hotwire healing. I said, how? He said, by speaking my creative word. By speaking my creative word. Repeat this after me. How, put your hand on yourself. How do I hotwire healing for my body? By speaking the creative word. So you're going to pose an answer, a question, and then you're going to give an answer. How do I hotwire healing for my body? By speaking the creative word. Again, how do I hotwire healing for my body? And then you answer yourself by speaking the creative word. How do I do it? By speaking the creative word. We took some time and I went over a few notes that I had taken from Charles Capps, the master teacher of how to speak the creative word. From his message, how to succeed when others fail. Now I want to tell you again the purpose of this page. I set this page up, Divine Healing Questions and Answers, to help those of you who may have been prayed for many times 
and you still do not have a complete manifestation of your healing. Or maybe you're in a position where you have no one to pray for you. What is the answer that I'm wanting to give you? The same answer that Jesus gave me when I asked him, Lord, what can be done to help people in very serious physical situations that are desperate and ready to give up the fight for health. And he said, you have to hotwire healing. This means bypassing sitting and listening to more hours of videos. That means bypassing ordering more tapes or more books on divine healing and reading them. You don't have time for all that anymore. Hot wiring means we're passing all of the normal channels and we're going straight to the circuit that brings the power in a car. I had a mechanic give me an explanation of hot wiring. And the way I've seen it done is by people that want to steal cars. They get in the car, they reach under the dashboard, they take the uh, power wire, they take the, the one that's going to the uh, ignition, I think. Don't quote me on this. But anyway, they don't have a key to start the car. They don't have the normal channel of starting the car. So they reach under the dashboard, they get these wires that are under there, they twist them together, and when they do, the car starts on its own. At least older cars do. I don't know that the newer ones do that. But in my mind, that's how you hotwire something. You take the two wires that have the power, you put them together, and the power starts surging to start the car, to start the course of healing for your body. The manifestation of healing for your body. Hallelujah. So that's what my purpose is on this page. It's not necessarily to pray for me, to pray for you, to see you healed. Do you know the story about, well, the phrase, you can catch a fish and feed a man a meal. But if you teach him to fish, you fed him for his entire life. Going and having someone pray for you, and I am not saying don't do it, but getting it on your own, developing your faith, developing your thoughts, developing your words, developing your courage, developing your consistency, helps you grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ so that you don't need to go to other people to help you all the time. You don't have to keep listening. I don't hardly ever listen to healing journeys. I don't hardly ever listen to Andrew Womack teach on healing. I don't listen to Brother Hagen videos anymore. Why? Because I have passed that place of learning into the place of assurance, into the place of how did Charles Capp say that? He entered into the place of being fully persuaded. I have been fully persuaded. I am grounded and settled. This brick is in my house that I've built. And now all I have to do, I know, is stand in my authority in Christ and declare, hallelujah, speak the creative word. I have come to that place. I can do it consistently. It's a part of my inner life. It's a part of my inner thoughts. Hallelujah. My issue most of the time is getting my mouth working. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So that's what I want for you. I don't care what your condition is. I mean, we have been through, just to go over a few of these. And if you have sent me your condition and you don't see it enumerated or spoken the way you wrote it, what I have tried to do is lump various ones together in um, a categories, in, into categories as I listed them on the list yesterday. 
but just going down through some of these. I'll read them to you. Panic attacks. Here we go. This is even when you have sickness, you have panic attacks. It can bring on panic attacks. It brings on fear. It brings on depression. So we're kneeling also with your soul here. I want to get your soul well. Third John 2, that's what uh, Gordon Lindsay said. He quoted that verse. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even. However, it is even as your soul prospers. Brother Caps, he had a throat ulcer. He was thousands of dollars in debt. He said, I had nowhere else to go. I'm all over the place, but just hang on with me tonight, will you? I just, I prayed and prayed about the message this evening, and I just want to follow the Holy Ghost, however it happens to come out, if you don't mind. <clears throat> He said, personally, I saw when sick and deep in debt that if I didn't do the sayings of Jesus, I would fail in life. I was sick with a throat ulcer and thousands of dollars in debt. Hallelujah. Then he got some teaching tapes on confessing the word, on faith and confessing the word. He said, I'd walk the turn row in my field and I would confess and declare these scriptures day after day. After the first week, he said, the first thing you need to get healed is your attitude. I'm taking these notes tonight and I am going to show you how to study and put notes into operation after you take them. I have read these notes nearly every day since last week. I've listened to that videotape of Brother, Co Brother, Brother Capsis, How to Succeed When Others Fail. I've taken more notes. I've gone over the notes. I've read the notes. I've said the notes. We have to do what he's talking about. You have to confess the word until your attitude starts changing. That's the first thing he saw on his journey to health and deliverance from financial indebtedness of thousands of dollars. You know, if you think, say, well, I've got this sickness. Okay, let's go back over here now. I'm going back over here to our list of things. Insomnia, hypertension, hypothyroidism, an atrophied muscle in my leg, uh, double vision, gastritis, esophagus problems, swallowing problems, ear problems, heart arrhythmia, gallstones, exhaustion, balance problems, itchy scalp and hair loss, neurological diseases, TMJ dysfunction, exhaustion, brain fog, tinnitus, eye issues, allergies, broken shoulder, uh, Skin problems, her skin that isn't normal anymore. They can't, can't wash it or moisturize it. Diabetes, blood pressure again. Complex regional pain syndrome. Many parts of, that's affecting many parts of my body. Raynaud's syndrome, cold hands and feet. TMJ issues, cervical spine stenosis, scoliosis, muscle spasms. Tension, anxiety, and insomnia, dry mouth, dry eyes, tiredness, GI tract problems, realignment in the neck, arthritis in the knees, had a stroke, high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, dermatomyositis, an autoimmune disease, gum bleeding, cataracts, suffering, pseudomonas. I don't know what that is exactly. I'm going to look that up. Lung infections, uh, chronic foot pain, wasting in the feet, at overactive adrenal glands, poor circulation, dry eyes, blocked ears, varicose vein stuff, MS, vision and hearing loss, hormonal imbalance, blurred vision, macular hole, that macular, macula, I think that's in the eye. Dry eyes, brain injuries, rosacea, rheumatoid arthritis in my hands. Another one who is an incomplete para paraplegic, it says. Arthritis in my knees, 
pain, burning, and stiffness in my feet. So through all of that, and if I didn't mention yours in particular, I know I've had some other ones come in since then. Illness is illness. The seriousness, all of you are in various stages of, of seriousness. Pain, discomfort, different things, de body degenerations that are going on. Some are very serious, some are less serious. But if it's your condition, to you it's serious. Even if it doesn't, if it isn't medically serious yet. But the thing is, we want Jesus stripes covered it all. <laughs> Brother Caps was thousands of dollars in debt. Thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, I don't have debt. Well, what if all of these conditions I've just read are like in comparison to being thousands of dollars in debt financially? Having that type of debt financially is just as insurmountable a mountain as all of these conditions that we have just read. So he may have only had a throat ulcer, but his mountain was thousands of dollars of debt. And by him speaking, he hotwired it. Someone gave him a message on faith and confession, speaking the word. This confession is in confession of sin. I almost don't even like to work, use the word. I like to word like I don't, almost don't even like to use the word confession anymore because people have castigated the message of faith and proclaiming the word of God. So I don't even hardly like to use that word confession anymore because right away people think something, preconceived idea in their mind, and they'll turn you right off from listening to the good message, good news you have for them. I like the word the the say let's declare let that makes you stand up a little straighter that makes you straighten your shoulders yes I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help me God I declare by Jesus stripes I'm healed I declare this sickness has no dominion over me I declare my eyes are normal in Jesus name I declare I have right circulation in my hands and feet in the name of Jesus by Jesus stripes I'm healed body you be normal I declare to you body you be normal in the name of Jesus from the top of my head to the soles of my feet every hair on my head is numbered I thank you, Father, I have a full head of hair. I don't lose my hair. I have a beautiful head of hair in Jesus' name. Some of you are having that problem. I like to use the word, let us declare over these issues. Speak the creative word over these issues. Hallelujah. Huh. So what did he say there? Now this I want to go back. To again, Jesus said to me, Jesus said to me, you have to hotwire healing. And I said, how? He said, by speaking my creative word. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I want to go back here for just a moment. Now I'm working with my notes. I want to read here just a little bit. Again, more of Charles Capps' testimony. Hmm. My goodness gracious. I have no idea what time it is. My clock says 20 minutes to 7, and I know I sure have been talking longer than 8 minutes. I started at 6.30. So out goes the clock tonight. I cannot post the declarations. You will just have to go back and listen to the video. You get the feel of what I'm doing. Just do it on your own. Don't repeat my words necessarily. I'm just giving you a demonstration. It's got to come out of your heart. 
That's another thing Brother Cap says. This is not a formula that you're going to work and see healing, see sickness leave and healing manifest. You can't do it because I said it. I'm just a demonstration to you of how the spirit in which you're to do it and the words that you're supposed to say. But get your own words. I can say those words so freely without any confession in front of me because I've hit them in my heart. If this has got to live on the inside of you, that's why your soul has to prosper with it first. Oh, Lord, I want you to have it so bad. And none of what the illnesses that you have sent me move me one iota because I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to heal any condition or I wouldn't be on here. Just as Paul said, making a fool of myself before the world, telling them that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is nothing too hard for the Lord. And God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. But he has said and he will do it. He has said and he will do it by his, well, anyway, I'm not going to get to preaching. <laughs> <clears throat> oh no let's go back again this is on page two of my notes brother caps see this is what i just got done saying to you he said personally I saw. He didn't see here. He saw it in here. You have to see these truths of speaking that you can speak to the mountain and it will obey you. You can speak to the sickness. You can speak to your body. You can speak to the, speak the word of God and see how, you can, but you have to see it, that you are the one that has the authority. You are the one that can put the creative word of God in your mouth and move a mountain. And you have to be convinced about it. He said, personally, I saw in my soul, not just your spirit. Your spirit already knows these things. It's your soul that has to see it. That's what Andrew Womack is talking about when he talks about your imagination. The word of God will reshape your imagination. So faith and the word have something to work with. The word of God will see going on. I saw when sick and deep in debt, that if I didn't do the sayings of Jesus, I would fail in life. I saw it. I saw it. I circled that. I said, hmm. Then you stop and you meditate. I saw it. Hmm. The Holy Spirit will help you. This means Father, open the eyes of my understanding so I can see the truth that Jesus told me I could speak to a mountain and see it move. I could speak to natural things, my natural body, and it would obey me. Catch a glimpse of it. Charles Capps just caught a glimpse of it. He said, oh, I saw when sick that if I didn't do what Jesus said, I would fail in life. So that's one thing. I'm learning from these notes by going over them. You take notes so you can go over them and over them and suck the honey out of them. 
get the depth of understanding that they're meant to impart. Get directions of what to do. He said, my thoughts and my words had been established in my current situation. Hmm. In his sickness, in his debt, his indebtedness. If you were thousands and thousands of dollars in debt, think about the weight that would be on your mind day and night. Insomnia, worry, anxieties, panic attacks. Some of the things that all of you talked about. See, my thoughts were established in my current situation of being sick and in debt. Now that tells us something right now, that we have to get our thinking out of our current situation and into something else. My thoughts and words, check up on yourself. What do you talk about? What do you think about most? Is the word of God just snippets going through your mind at times? Or just certain snatches of time during the day when you quote it? And then your mind the rest of the time is established in this physical thing that you're dealing with? If it is, your soul's not prospering yet. Oh, I'm laying it on the line for you tonight. Because I want... I hate all of these diseases that you're dealing with and it's such a cry of my heart to see you free and Jesus said if you would speak the creative word of God it will hotwire your healing see so we've got to start thinking about the word of God we need to speak so we can start speaking it we need to get our minds established in this creative word that we need to speak so we can start speaking it. It just needs to come out spont it needs to you need to get so full that it just comes out spontaneously. You don't have to go and get a list of healing scriptures anymore. You don't have to get out Charles Capps' book anymore, God's Creative Power for Healing. He walked up and down the turn row at his farm, when he wrote all these scriptures out, the Lord said, you go to the Bible and you look up the scriptures, what I've said pertaining to your situation about getting out of debt and getting healed, and you write them down and you start confessing them every single day. Well, he did. He wrote them down. That's where his little book, God's Creative Power for Healing, came from in the first place. Those were all the scriptures he looked up and wrote down on a yellow legal pad. He was serious about this thing. He was going down for the last time. Some of you mentioned, one person mentioned cancer they're dealing with. They may be going down for the last time. Your eyes, you may be losing your sight and it's going down for the last time. Your soul's clutching to sanity and it's just gasping right now, and it'd be getting ready to go down for the last time. Oh, Father. Rescue the perishing, Lord. Help them to see it. Help them to understand. Help them to do it, Lord. Oh, Rabbi Kis, Sandala Makota de Yatabashik, Masokolamat. Oh, my thoughts and words had to be established, had been established in my current situations. I had to learn God's word and unlearn my words. See, these are directions for you. These are helps for your situation. You have to unlearn your words and learn God's words so you can say them. Oh, namasika mahota mi shika malariata. You know, the scripture kept coming to me today. Some of you, and I don't even want to get into demons and all of that stuff. 
There's so much weird teaching out there about all of that. Normally, I stay away from the subject. There was a few instances in scripture where sicknesses was caused by demons. Not a lot that you even see Jesus dealing with the demon when it came to sickness and disease. Search it out for yourself. Mostly what you're dealing with is the law of sin and death that Adam loosed in Rome, in, in the Genesis. Wherefore, by one man, Adam, sin came into the world and death by sin and death. Spiritual and physical attacked all men and until Jesus returns, it's going to continue its attack on us. That's why God has sent his word so we can put it in our mouth and defeat that law of sin and death that wants to operate against our bodies every single day. I've talked to you about the green mist from the movie, the Ten Commandments. Every day you get out of bed, it's floating along the ground and you put your feet in it. You can't see it with your eyes, but that's just a picture of it from a movie. It's real. It's there. It's in the air. Right now, we're having a whole big deal about flu going on here. My daughter's school was canceled tomorrow because of all the cases of flu that's broken out among the children. That green mist of sin and death is floating along the ground. Don't get up ignorant in the morning and think you're already living in la-la land because you're not. Every day, the enemy is going about seeking whom he may devour, seeking to influence your mind and your will, your emotions and your body, your finances, your family, your circumstances with his law of sin and death. But Romans 8, 2 says, however, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you, the believer, free from that law of sin and death. But you've got to recognize it's there. You've got to get up and declare do your declarations. Take your authority in the name of Jesus and put it under your feet. Well, that's what Charles Capp started doing. He started getting the scriptures. He walked the turn row on his farm and he started quoting the word of God up and down, up and down, day and night, back and forth. Hallelujah. He said within a week. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I'll just read it for you. The Lord told me, go through the word of God and write down what I said about your circumstances and begin to confess it daily. What if you turn off the TV, turn off Andrew Womack, turn off all these other wonderful teachers and get with the word of God so that it speaks directly to you and not through some other vessel. You need an encounter with the creative word of God. You need a confrontation. You need it to confront you. Go. That's what Charles Capps had, a confrontation with the word of God and what God said about his circumstances, what God said about his financial situation, what God said about his body. Get what God said. Oh, the Holy Spirit is there to convince you that God meant what he said. He means it. He'll do it. This is what he said he'd do. He'll do it. Faith comes. The mind, what is it? Your mind gets off of your circumstances. Go through the word of God and write down what I said about your circumstances and begin to confess it day after day. See, God told him, confess it day after day. Are you going to be a miraculously healed tomorrow? I'm not going to lie to you. Probably not. Because what I am talking to you about is not a gift of the, op an operation of a gift of the spirit. The, the working of miracles or the gifts of healings. I am talking about God's word, a word encounter and God's word healing you. What is it? The word is nigh. Hallelujah. But it must be in two places. You've got to get it in your mouth. You've got to get it in your heart. He sent his word and healed them. Uh, the Lord told him, confess them day after day. 
Well, I walked the turn row in my field and confessed and declared these scriptures day after day and throughout the day. Loose the creative power of God on your body throughout the day. Day after day, you loose it on your body. You speak the creative word to your body. Andrew Womack's not coming to your house. Chad Gonzalez is not coming to your house. But the word is nigh you. The spirit dwells with you. He dwells within you. I'm mad about I'm mad about all this. I can't you tell? <laughs> Woo! Help me whip the devil, will you? Help me drive him out of your body. I'm doing my part. I need you all to do your part to get this vision, to get up on, stand up on the inside of you and run and not grow weary and walk and not faint until he said, one thing he said down here that was good. Again, Charles Caps. I am going to continue saying what God says I can have until I have it. Attitude. I am going to continue saying what God says I can have until I have it. And he didn't give up. When you give up, you're not fully persuaded yet. And you might as well go back and work on your soul some more. You know, we talk about doubt. Yes, when you're a baby, and I'm just going to knock this thing. It's time to grow up. Yes, when you're a baby Christian in Mark 11, and Brother Hagin said it, you can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. Well, it's time to outgrow that. It's time to get our minds renewed and live in the renewed mind. Live with the renewed mind. I don't know about you. I don't like doubt in my head. I like a peace. I like a peaceful mind. I want peace of mind. I don't want doubt running around in here. Doubt, you get out. I'm going to drive you out. I'm going to replace you. I'm going to put the word of God in there and I'm going to run you out. I'm going to say the word of God and mind you're going to listen and you're going to learn some things and you're going to stop that doubting. You are going to become fully persuaded. Especially if you're dealing with MS or tinnitus or some of these other conditions that are so oh, body binding that we were reading about earlier. He said at first, now listen to this. So what do you want to do now? What do we want to do? Let me go back here. I hope I didn't throw my page away. Good thing I got them all numbered. I would lose myself. Jesus, he started out quoting this verse. How to succeed when others fail from a seminar entitled Doing the Sayings of Jesus. Luke 6, the story about the man that built his house on the rock. Jesus said, you have to come to me, you have to hear my sayings, but then you have to do them. The man whose house collapsed came and heard, but he didn't do. Make sure you do it. Don't even get out of bed in the morning until you make some positive confessions to get your mind from not being squirrely right off. Ju the mind jumping off, how did he say it down here? His mind was too tangled up in his current situations. You may wake up in the morning or in the night and you got pain in your body. You've got to start living separate from your body. Don't let your mind, which is the eternal part of you, part of your inward man, your real man. Don't let your mind and your emotions and your will sink into your current circumstances when with your all that you are in your new creation is wanting to see you healed. So before you even get out of bed in the morning, thank you, Lord. Body, thank you. Thank you for healing in this body, Father. Thank you by Jesus' stripes I was healed. Thank you that my so-and-so, my eyes are normal. You have eye problems? Say, my eyes are normal. You have tinnitus? My ears are normal. You have muscle pains and aches? My body is pain-free. Say immediately when you wake up in the morning what you want to see manifest in your body. 
Don't start the conversation. Oh, no. Here we go. I still got this pain. I got to do this. How am I going to get out of bed? You know your litany that you go through with yourself when you first wake up. Well, if it's caught up, if your thoughts and your words are caught up in your circumstances, you've got some work to do. That's all there is to do it. You've got to walk your turn row and confess what God has said in his word about your body. And even there, if there is a demon there, I talked about that earlier. If there is a spirit there, you don't have to go digging around for it. Take the word. It says in the scriptures, we need the washing of the water of the word. You get full enough of the word and there's not going to be no demon in there binding you, no spirit of affliction living with you. The word of God will drive them out. Isn't the word of God the sword of the spirit? Yes, it is in the whole armor of God. That's your weapon of war. And if you get yourself washed with the word, wash your mind, wash your words, wash your emotions, wash your will, wash your body, wash your body, wash your circumstances. There won't be any place, even if there is a devil, he's not going to stay in hiding no more. He will pack his bags and leave. <clears throat> Amen. You go back over here, what Jesus said. Lord, what can we be done? What can be done to help these people with chronic situations? <laughs> My clock isn't running at all. So I have absolutely no idea what time it is. Anyway, here goes. Lord, what can be done to help these people? He said, you got a hot wire healing. And he didn't say by going somewhere and getting deliverance. He didn't say going somewhere and getting the devil cast out of you. He didn't say going somewhere for counseling for a year and a half to figure out the root cause. He said, hotwire it by speaking my creative word. If you can't get out of the house, you can do that. You can say it inside yourself. If you can't speak, if you can read, you can read it. I'm not going to go into all that. All the yell butts, yell butts. Amen. If you're listening, you got ears to hear. If you're watching, you got eyes to see. So just put them to work. Hallelujah. Get your sword. Sh sharpen your sword. So what are we doing here now? This is page four again. How did I get down there? Hey, be a wise man. Do the sayings of Jesus. So your house is built on the rock. He said, personally, I saw that if I didn't do the sayings of Jesus, I would fail in life. And that's what I'm telling you. It's time to do what Jesus said do. Some of you, your body is continuing to deteriorate year after year, maybe because of aging, maybe because of the issue that you're dealing with. Well, it's time to do the sayings of Jesus. It's time to do the sayings of Jesus. You're failing in life physically. And I don't want to see that for you. Jesus doesn't want to see that for you. He went to the cross. He bore the stripes so that you wouldn't fail in life in this area of your physical well-being. I saw, he said, that if I didn't do the sayings of Jesus, I would fail in life. I had a complete shock today. Now, you all know I've been in the Christian walk for a long time. And today is the first time when I was studying out, doing the sayings of Jesus, and Brother Caps, of course, you know where he went. Mark 11, right? Mark 11. Oh, how we've heard sermons on Mark 11. Mark 11 has been preached for 50, 60 years now. Whosoever shall say, to this mountain. Aren't you a whosoever? These are the words of Jesus. If you don't start doing the words of Jesus, you're going to fail when it comes to health, having a life of wellness. Whosoever shall say to this mountain. So you got to talk to it. Talk, not think. You got to say, oh, we're going to talk about this. 
Not all tonight, though. I'm just wiring up here. I'm going to pursue this topic that Jesus said to me about hot wiring healing and getting you speaking the creative word, and I am not getting off it until he tells me. We have got to drive this home if we're going to hot wire your healing. And you have no idea how fast it may come if you start doing this saying, doing this saying of Jesus. I got a got a text message in today, a lady that I've been working with. We had this whole discussion. She listened to my video from last week, how to hot wire healing. I posted it on YouTube. She's telling me about this issue she's having and this mental issue and this physical issue. And I said, well, she said, I listened to your video. I says, well, she said, well, I've looked at this. I've studied that. I've been through this book. I said, stop it, stop it, stop it. Start speaking the word. She, that was two days ago. She sent me a text message. It's totally wild. Everything's turned around for her completely. Now she's still got some physical issues, but her soul has turned around. And she is on cloud nine. So you just don't know. Give the sayings of Jesus a chance. He said, speak if you would speak to this mountain and command it to be removed and say to it, be thou removed and be the cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have it. He shall have it. And we talked last week about the fact we, it isn't Jesus we're doubting. We believe that he could do it that he could speak a word and move the mountain, but we doubt the fact that we can do it. That's where the doubt lies. It doesn't doubt it with G it doesn't lie with believing Jesus could do it. The doubt lies with believing we could do it. That's why you've got to start getting the word in your mouth and speaking it and speaking it and speaking it. He said down here, as he walked the, the turn row, and he said <clears throat> Um, he felt like he was lying. Oh, I like to see where he's actually said that. Anyway, he thought he was lying. And the Lord said to him, he's so sweet. Jesus, this is what I'm saying. Jesus walked him through each out of each doubt, each contention that came against him getting his answer. And he'll do the same for you. He said, I felt like I was lying when I first started making these declarations. And the Lord said to him, son, how can you be lying when you're saying about yourself what I've said? You got to convince yourself. You got to tell that mind, I'm not lying because I'm saying I am going to say about me what God said about me and you be quiet and listen. And you say it long enough, the mind is going to finally shut up and shut up its butts. Yow butt, yow butt, you don't see anything. That's why he said, my thoughts and words had been established in my current situations. I had to learn God's word to unlearn my words. But the thought kept coming to me, things are getting worse. Oh, I've been learning some things. It isn't always the devil. That's another thing I'm learning, listening to this one video of Charles Capsis. It isn't the devil talking to you all the time. It's this carnal, unrenewed mind that's making judgments based on what it's seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and feeling. So you're dealing with your unrenewed mind more than you're dealing with the devil. He said, the thought kept coming to me, things are getting worse. And the Lord, the Lord said to him, doesn't Jesus just break in sometimes in your thought processes and startle you? He does me every now and then. The thought kept coming to me, things are getting worse. The Lord said to me, who said that they were? Well, when I heard that, I knew it wasn't God. So when that thought comes to you, oh, I'm getting worse. Oh, my eyesight's getting worse. Oh, this is... Whenever the word worse comes up, you need to crucify it right then with that end point on your sword, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Boom, nail it to the wall. 
don't tolerate the word getting the words getting worse. That's that's most of the time. That's really what you can take that as is a signal that you need to get more word up here. It will stop it. It will stop it. Mind renewal. Paul begged the re Romans. Romans 12, I beseech you, brethren, I beg you, renew your minds. <clears throat> See, I'm going back and forth from page one to page two to page three of the notes I shared with you last week. See all the meat that is in here, all the little keys of things to do to help you get to hotwire your healing. <clears throat> I felt like I was lying because my circumstances hadn't changed. I felt like I was lying when I confessed the scriptures because my circumstance hadn't changed. I felt like I was lying when I confessed the scriptures because my circumstance hadn't changed. Well, what does that tell you? That tell you that tells you he was confessing the word even though his circumstances had not changed. You have to start out confessing the word in the same circumstances. <clears throat> At first I felt like I was lying because my circumstances hadn't changed. The Lord said to me, son, how can you lie saying what I said about you? After the first week, he said, this is why I'm excited for you. You will have an immediate change if you'll do this, even if it isn't physical yet. It'll be in here. It'll be in here in your emotions. You won't wake up in the middle of the night anxious about what's going to happen to my body tomorrow. How long is it going to be before I'm going to die? What about this? How long before I lose my eyesight? This and that. How long, how far is this disease going to progress in me until I can't function as a human being anymore? <clears throat> you won't have that. Your attitude will change because the spoken word that you're going to speak, even though your circumstances have not changed, that creative word of God that's going to hotwire things for you is going to begin changing you internally which is where true, lasting, physical healing really comes from. And you've got to keep your soul prosperous after that to keep your body healthy and have a life of wellness. So you're developing new habits that will give you a life of wellness. We're developing habits here. We're putting on a way of life here. Oh, my goodness. Did you know? Okay. I'm going getting ahead of myself. I'm still on page three of my notes from last week. After the first week, after the first week, I could tell the difference in my attitude. If your attitude hasn't changed, you still got the same old fearful, uneasy feelings and thoughts. Keep at it. You're not doing it enough. You're not doing it enough. Keep scrub-a-dub-dubbing. Keep washing it with the water of the word. Man, some of us, You've lived with your conditions for so long, your whole mind is steeped in them. That should become your identity. Your imaginations are full of the possibilities of where it's going to lead. Oh, the washing of the water of the word. The washing of the water of the word. The washing of the water of the word. And it doesn't always have to be complete healing scriptures all the time. Just say scriptures. I'm sure some of you, most of you know scriptures by heart. He will keep me in perfect peace if I keep my mind stayed on him. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph in Christ. Greater is he that's in me. See, none of them have to do with healing, but those are scriptures you're quoting and they will wash your mind. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I declared the word. He said, one, two, three. Three months, consistency, consistency, consistency. At the end of three months, the ulcer was completely healed. So if you don't see any changes the first month, you don't see any changes the second month, you don't see any changes the third month, be consistent. Give God time. 
Give the seed a chance to grow. The seed of God's word. The seed of your faith in God's word. Hallelujah. Did you know? Now listen to this. This is on page three. This is so crucial. This will pop your eyes out. I got away from Mark eleven twenty three, but I'll get back there in a minute. Did you know you can change what you believe about your situation? Right now, you believe something about your situation. And apparently, if I can be so bold to say it, you must not be believing right or you still wouldn't be in it or wouldn't be getting worse. We got to face the truth, everybody. If your situation is not changing, then what you're believing about it needs to change before the situation will change. Did you know you can change what you believe about your situation? You can change what you believe, but first you have to examine, now what do I really believe? Where I am at today is the product of what I believe. See, all the things, I could say all the things that all of you sent me, these are statements right here. I know you believe that Jesus is by his stripes you're healed. But all these things right here on these papers are telling me you still believe you've got this too. You're still believing you have this too. Because of the circumstances that you're still in. And I'm not castigating you for that. I'm just saying we have double-minded believing going on here. And what does James say about the double-minded man? Did you know you can change what you believe? You can change your imaginations. You can change your thoughts about what your condition is by what you say. You can change your believing by what you say. What you're believing right now isn't producing any results, so it needs to be changed. You can change your believing well, how do I change my believing? Speak God's word. That's another hot wiring. How to change what you believe. You speak the word of God. Did you know? You can go again to my Bible school page and download these notes and use them. Print them out. They're PDF. And go over this teaching again tonight and use these notes. But I suggest you better read through I'm only on page three. So, did you realize there was that much in the meat and instruction and light and encouragement in these notes from last week? See how we skim over things too much. We, we take in more volume instead of sucking the honey out of what we really already have. Did you know this is shocking. You can change what you believe about your situation by what you say. You can change what you believe about your situation by what you say. Now, you know what you really believe. You know, you believe it with the spirit, your new creation. Yes, you acknowledge it by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. But you have to believe it here, too. You have to believe it here. You have to believe it with your will. If you're going to deal with some of these serious issues, you can't just flippantly have it fall on you. Like Brother Hagen always told us, it's not going to fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. <clears throat> now, he said, you have been saying, you've already been saying what you believe about it anyway. That you have this condition or that. You have been saying what you believe about it all along anyway, that you have this condition or that. Sometimes we're forced into it by family members or caregivers. Confessing we have this, admitting we have that, medicines, this and that, all this stuff. I understand that. But see, you've got a little hidden chamber inside yourself. There's things we do have to say outwardly, but inside, to, to for where you're at in the situation right now, but inside, you got a little into the chamber. Be free, Holy Spirit. Speak through me gently as I close the door. Here in your secret closet, you can start saying 
this, what Jesus said. You can quietly start doing what Jesus said to do. You can start changing in your soul what you believe. Even though maybe because of caregivers and things, other words still have to come out of your mouth while you're dealing with the symptoms. But you leave those as quickly as you can. And you go back inside to these words. Away from these words and to these words here that you're hiding in your heart. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, now listen to this. Again, page three of the notes. Others can, can spark you or inspire you in a certain direction. See, I'm just doing everything I can but do cartwheels and stand on my head tonight. <laughs> because why? I want to take some time. I may do it even tomorrow and Saturday to actually speak to these conditions that you've written to me about. I do want to do the practical application of the doing of it, the speaking, the creative word about it. But I felt the Lord wanted me to lay this next foundational block tonight before we get to those things. So I can inspire you in a certain direction about doing the sayings of Jesus. But here's what he says. But what you are saying to yourself is what you're going to really believe. You can sit and listen to videos all day long. But what's your self-talk in here in the middle of the night when you wake up? When you turn the television off or turn the healing journeys off? Say, boy, I wish I could have that. Yeah, well, I, well, Jesus will give me that. He gave it to them. He'll give it to me. Brother Cap said, don't build your faith on a testimony. Testimonies are nothing but windows to show you a picture of what you could have. But you have to walk in the footsteps of that person who's giving their testimony on the healing journeys if you want to get what they got. You have to walk in their footsteps. They confess the word. Some of you talk about Barry Bennett. I know what he went through. You hear, he may have done the physical things, but what, to get healing? But what do you hear out of him most? Scriptures, trusting God, faith. That's what you hear. That's the walk that he walked, even though he did some things in the natural. And we have to walk in those faith footsteps. It says, even of our father Abraham, who, when all hope seemed to be gone, he hoped on. And he, like God, called things that are not as though they were. And he gave glory to God that what God had promised, he was able to perform. God is able to perform whatever you have need of. There is nothing you're dealing with that the power of God cannot correct and heal. So watch your self-talk. Others can spark you or inspire you in a certain direction, but what you are saying to yourself is what you're going to really believe. I would spend this evening and tomorrow write out a piece of paper that says, what am I saying to myself? And start making yourself aware of what you're saying to yourself. Years ago, there was a book that was called, Who Am I? Who Are You When Nobody's Looking? So in other words, you could put on a big face out in public, but who really are you when no one is looking? What, what kind of person are, well, this is the same thing. You can say all the right things when you're around me, but what are you saying when you're out of, out of the sight of another human being? Change your speaking to change your believing. So even there, if you want to build your faith, you want to get to that place of being fully persuaded. Oh, he talks about that over here. Oh, it's so good. You want to get to that faith place of being fully persuaded? What do you do? Change your speaking. Change your speaking. Don't worry about having faith. Don't worry about am I believing right. I know I gave you an assignment about tomorrow. 
but I just want to make you aware. Even if you get everything corrected, you still need to remind yourself every single day and ask yourself, what am I saying to myself? Because Jesus said the evil of today is what you have to face down. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. He said the evil of today is sufficient to overcome. What does that mean? That means you've got circumstances in this fallen world, that law of sin and death, to face every single day. And it wants you to eat of its tree. The tree of knowledge of your circumstances. And so every day, you've got to do have to keep a check on yourself. What am I saying? What am I saying to myself right now? And then just say, hmm, I still need to work on that some more. I've been thinking this. I've been thinking. And then just go to work on it. Just get the wires out and start hot wiring. Amen. Just start speaking the word. Hallelujah. And change your believing then. So your mind will continue to get renewed and your carnal mind won't fight against you and side with the circumstance. It'll side with the word. It'll get renewed and side with the word. He said, change your speaking to change your believing. So bountifully, so bountifully, words of health and healing. Your words are seeds. Where you're speaking the word of God, the DNA of God is in it to bring you health and even correct your DNA situations if they're not right. The life of God, the Holy Spirit's watching over that word. He's breathing into it. When you speak it, speak it with confidence. Speak it believing that. You've got to engage your faith while you're speaking it. Then the Holy Spirit works with your faith and the words you've spoken. Change your speaking to change your believing so bountifully words of healing and health. That's when he said, I am going to continue saying until I get what God says I can have. And if you hear that video of Charles Capps, how to, how to succeed when others fail, he did it for the rest of his life. He did it through business dealings. It's so joyous to listen to his testimonies of how things were opposed against him when it came to finances, but he just kept speaking the word. It's wonderful testimonies. And the Lord counseled him. The Lord will give you counsel to see his word come to pass. He will give you counsel in working with his word to see it come to pass. That is, that's what's so encouraging to me. He does it all the time. Over the next year, he says, I confess the word of God daily. A year, a year, a day, two days, three days, four days, a week, a week, a week, two weeks, two weeks, three weeks, three weeks, three weeks, a month, a month, a month, second month, first week, second month, second week, second month, third week, <laughs> a year. If I don't do the sayings of Jesus, I'm going to fail in life. He was a desperate man. How desperate are you to see God glorified in his word come to pass in your life? To have what he said you can have. Oh. Over the next year, I confess the word of God daily. Don't miss a day. Don't miss a day. What is it that you do every day? Be just as consistent about this every day. And you can build up more and more time doing it. After a year, over the next year, I confessed the word of God daily. And I began to see things. I began to the, see things I said. Things I said. Things I said change situations. I began to see things I said change situations. Physically, financially. God's word produces faith. You need more faith? Hotwire it by speaking the word. When you hear you, when you hear you speak God's word, 
when you hear you speak God's word, not somebody on healing journeys. Now, if you want to listen to the healing journeys and write down every scripture they give, and then you confess them and make let you hear you say those verses. Well, somebody say amen. <laughs> and if you can't say amen, as Brother Hagen always said, say oh me, because it's so anyway. Oh, la mandariata. God's word produces faith, Romans 10, 17. And when you hear you speak God's word, your faith is built. When you hear you speak God's word, then your faith is built. It's not sitting there listening to videos all day long. Your faith is not getting built that way. You're hearing testimonies. It's a window to what you can have. But the faith to have it has, does not come except by you sitting down personally with the word of God and then speaking it. You hearing you speak God's word builds your faith. You hearing you speak God's word will build your faith. That's what this page is all about. You and God's word and what it says you can have and how to and helping you get it. I remember. See, here's the place we want to come to. I'm on page four right now. I remember when I became fully persuaded. Yes, it's possible. His testimony here tells us it's possible. I remember when I became fully persuaded, a confidence entered me. But I didn't have any more money than I had before. God's word. Oh, I love this. You interact with God's word like you interact with a lover. Oh, you make love to God's word. And God's word and God are one. The Holy Spirit gets excited when you do that. He said, I want to work in your life, but I can't work in your life unless you're working with the word. Because I work with the word and perform it with signs following. Confirm it with signs following. So when you, you just get with the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. I know just in this last week, even myself. Maybe that's why I'm all wired up tonight. I've been wired up all day today. Crazy one minute and sober the next. <laughs> but oh, ever since just reading these things and refreshing myself in what I heard 50 years ago and just spending time today, just speaking the word, just, just right out of the clear blue, just starting to quote the word of God. Just saying it inside my mind as I'm riding along in the car. Thinking about it. Meditating. Just interacting with the word all day today. And my time of interacting with the word has been increasing just since we started this study. I mean, I was good before. But you know, I said to my husband today, we, when we were pastoring, we would go to camp meetings. Brother Hagen, and we'd come home, we'd be so full of vim and vigor and vitality. We were just going to remake the town. But it wasn't many weeks, and the town conformed us again. Down we went. And I thought back on that today. And I'm sure many of you have experienced the same thing. You go to a meeting, you may see, even sit and listen to a video, and you get all inspired. But then you get back in the natural circumstances around you, people, problems come up, different things, and all of a sudden, it pulls you right back down. Well, if you will keep that lover relationship with the Word of God going, they won't bring you down anymore. I said to my husband, that's where we missed it. We were young in life and didn't know. And now... The Lord's been talking to me, that little tap on the shoulder. I've been feeling it. He's saying, you guys are maintaining, but if you don't speed it up some, the slip is going to start because you're getting older. You're maintaining, 
but the slip's going to start. And it's going to be this little ailment, and then it's going to be that, and then it's going to be something else. He said, you've got to get more serious. You've got to practice what you're studying right here. You've got to get the word of God. You've got to stay in that place. We're fully persuaded. But when the circumstances start building up in the body, then that being fully persuaded thing in your soul I'm talking about starts getting eaten away at. And that's how it starts. This little ache, that little problem, well, you are getting older. You know what do you expect to be healthy your whole life? Why not? Why not? So I'm saying, oh, Lord, I feel that little tap on the shoulder. And so we talked about it today. I said, honey, we need to be careful. We need to press in. We're doing good, but we need to ramp it up some. Because each day, the law of sin and death wants to pull us one foot in the grave. They say, oh, you know, they got one foot in the grave already. Well, no, no. I'm leaving by saying goodbye and leaving my body. I'm not leaving because I got one foot in the grave. And then they're just waiting for me to get the other one in there. Uh-uh. Nope. Y'all know what that means when they say that. It means they're half dead already. Not me. And I'm not going there. <clears throat> but we need to start ramping it up ourselves. So what the drag that is going on with our body will stop. And we can stay up here where we want to have a quality of life until the very last day of our life. Are y'all with me now? So see, I'm learning too. I'm learning at the level that I'm at. I'm learning about speaking the word more. So my soul is hearing it. I think that's why I'm so wild. I've been quoting the word more. My soul's been hearing it and it's just jumping for joy. Oh, good news. Wow, awesome. <laughs> uh, at the dentist today. Can't you see my teeth I got? Got my teeth back. Those of you that didn't know. Well, I'm not going to that story tonight. Anyway, I'm sitting there, the dentist chair, quoting the scriptures. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed with long life. You satisfy me. And you say, you just do it to do it? Yes! 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 Because I love the Lord. Oh, he heard my voice. And he rescued me. Many, many years ago, my husband and I were headed for a divorce. I was headed for adultery. And the Lord saved me. I love the Lord. She who is forgiven of much, loveth much. Jim, are you out there? He's standing by my door, I think. What time is it, honey? What time you got? Just a second. Ten minutes to eight. Oh, hey, I'm doing good. It's ten till eight. My clock over here is completely dead. It still says 20 minutes to seven. <laughs> I'm doing good. I ought to have a timer tonight to see how many words a minute I've been saying. You guys never know what you're going to be in for when you come on this broadcast each week. Sometimes I'm just sweet and quiet and motherly. Well, tonight, I'm sorry. I'm not feeling very motherly tonight. I'm feeling the preach on me tonight. Woo-hoo! I'm feeling the shout in me tonight. Glory to God. Okay, where am I at here? I remember when I became fully persuaded. A confidence entered me, but I didn't have any more money than I had before. The working of the word comes the word okay now that we're off of the fully persuaded thing but i want to talk about that some more to you next week or sometime coming up shortly about being fully persuaded let's talk some more about being fully persuaded um <clears throat> the working of the word comes when you when you say it out loud so in other words, if we're thinking it, it's not going to, uh, it'll help your innards, your innards, your soul and your mind. 
your emotions. It'll help you in there, but the, it'll work in there. But, and even sometimes you have to say it out loud if the oppression is really bad up here. But the working of the word for your body comes when you say it out loud. Finances is something out here in this world. The affecting of the working of the word on Brother Caps' finances came as he spoke it out loud out here in this realm where there's money that you can see and touch and feel. There's property to buy and sell. The working of the word comes when you say it out loud. Even when you say it out loud, it'll affect your soul and it'll affect your body. body. It'll affect things around you. If you are sick, all the more reason to say it because you are calling for what you don't see. You're calling for what you don't see. You're calling for what you don't see. See, you're standing there. You're the boss. You're the one in charge here. God's giving you his word to speak. He's giving you his spirit. He's giving you understanding. You then are to call for what you don't see. You don't see healing in your body? Call for it. Wellness come to my body in Jesus' name. Wellness. Just sit there and say the word wellness. If you don't know anything else right now, when you get off of here tonight or today, this afternoon, whenever, just sit there calmly for a little while if you don't have to get up. Put your hand on yourself. Get quiet inside. Focus on doing what Jesus said to speak. Speak and you'd have what you said. And just start saying that word. Wellness. Wellness, not sickness, wellness in my body, in Jesus' name. Get quieter and quieter inside yourself, shutting down the mind, the carnal mind, calming your emotions, letting your body hear your words. Give it some medicine. Wellness body. Maybe your body's given up hope of even having wellness anymore. It needs to hear that word. It needs to hear you say it. It needs to have hope given back to it once again. Thank you, Father. Wellness, body, in Jesus' name. Talk to your body. Jesus talked to the fig tree. He talked to the storms. He talked to the loaves and fishes. He said what he wanted. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just sense that anointing now starting to lift this evening. I just sense it. The working of a word comes when you say it out loud. If you are sick, all the more reason to say it because you are calling for what you don't see. You see it in here. So you're calling with your mouth for what you see in here, even though you don't see it out here. Romans 4.17 says God quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they were. Now I'm going to close with this here tonight. And I'm going to give you these verses and I want you to look them up. And think about them. Say them. Put your name in them. As I said, I got a, a shocking thing happen today. All the times I've heard Mark eleven twenty three preached. For years now. And I knew that it was in another, another place in the Gospels. One of the other Gospels. But do you know it's in all three of them? Mark 11. Whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and shall not doubt in his heart we're going to talk about heart too i'm getting some real understanding about heart barry bennett in one of his facebook postings when he mentioned heart all he was talking about was the feelings in the mind 
I think we need to get that word straightened out a little bit more. Heart meaning your feelings. Because your spirit doesn't doubt. We've, and that's the same thing Barry said. Your spirit doesn't doubt. So the heart here, not if you don't doubt in your heart, it's talking about your soul. That's why we've got to get our souls to grow out of this doubt thing. Mark eleven twelve is where Jesus cursed the fig tree. And it says, and the disciples heard him. Jesus was talking to a tree. And they heard him. Now, what does that tell you? He said it out loud. And he talked to a tree. Well, you know what happened then when they came back by. That's Mark 11. In Matthew 17, 14 to 20, it's talked about again. The disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. I believe that's the one. I was going to look those up for you, but right now, I'm not sure. I hope I don't get a mix. No, 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 no. That wasn't the one. That was the one here where the disciples tried to cast the demon out of the boy, and they couldn't. And they said to Jesus, how come we couldn't cast him out? And most of us, all we've ever heard about that verse is, it says, this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. You know what shocked me? You know my shock? The very next verse is said, because if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it shall obey you. I had no idea in all these years that that verse, that saying was associated with this verse about casting the demon out of the boy. So what does that tell me? Read it for you. Read it. I encourage you to read it. And don't get stuck on the fact where it says, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Focus on the verses after that, where G he said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, so and so and so. Well, if you want to fast something, fast doubt. Fast your doubts. <laughs> Luke 17, that was Matthew 17, 14 to 20 is where that story was. Luke 17, 5 and 6, the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith. Now, Charles Cass was talking about this one. What did Jesus say to them? If you have faith, it's a grain of mustard seed. You'd say to this mountain, and he starts into the same spiel all over again. I'm looking at that. I was shocked to find it was in all three Gospels. Say, well, you didn't know that? Well, I must not have. Especially the one where it talked about casting the devil out of the boy. I think that's the one that shocked me the most. You never hear that verse talked about, speaking to the mountain, associated with that story. All we ever hear about is the demon won't go out unless you fast. I won't rant about that anymore right now. I don't have much to rant about, but I'll get it. <laughs> that verse needs some ranting. Okay, and then Luke 17, 5 and 6, Lord, increase our faith. Jesus goes back to the same thing. I'm, I'm looking at this. I sat down and talked to my husband about it. First thing this morning, it was on my mind. I said, Jim, did you know that was in three places? In the Gospels, and one of them had to do with when the disciples couldn't cast that demon out. And so we're looking them up. Three places. And what does the scriptures tell? And, 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 and I said, well, look. and it was in three different situations. One was when he cursed the fig tree. One was the deal with the boy they couldn't cast the devil out of. And one was when they asked him to increase their faith. I'm saying, Lord, they heard you say that three times? And it had to have been three times because each situation was different. Jesus, what else did Jesus say three times? I don't know right now. I'd have to look it up. Each one of the gospel writers, writers emphasized different things. 
but in the mouth of two or three witnesses. It says in 1 John, let every word be established. Jesus was a prophet. Charles Katz got to talking about how what we're talking about here is principles, not formulas. I said to the Lord the other day, yesterday, I said, Lord, I'm having a hard time understanding this word principle. I know what it means, but I need a simpler way to explain it to people. He said, it's a law. That's all he said to me. Isn't that simple? A principle is a law. I said, oh, a law. He said, yeah. He said, and every word that came out of my mouth established a law. Whew. That was scary. Every word that came out of my mouth was a law. And he said, I don't say anything but what I hear my father say. He said, every word, this is just, he said that to me. And then just in my reasonings, so every word that Jesus said like that, he was establishing the law of the kingdom in this earth. He was establishing the laws of the kingdom in this earth. And this Mark 11, speaking things, is a law. And Charles Capps said, you have to do the sayings of Jesus if you don't want to fail in life, if you want health in your body. I don't care how critical that things are right now for you. Do the sayings of Jesus. And he said this, it's so important. He said it three times in three different situations. Now, I'd say that's some kind of importance. I'd say that's some kind of serious law thing going on there. So I think we better think seriously about this whole issue, about believing that we have authority in our mouths and can speak in Jesus' place the creative word and call into being what isn't. But you're all doing it on that foundation Remember the three foundations when we went through our book starting at the first of the year last year. Is a life of wellness possible and how do you achieve it? The three foundations for divine healing. The word of God, the work of the cross, the ministry of Jesus. So what you're calling to be has already been established by the word of God, the work of the cross and the sayings and the ministry of Jesus. So when you call things to be, develop, look at that, think about it, say that means me. I can have confidence that when I speak, mountains move. My body gets better. This condition is removed from my body. We're going to talk about all different things about it. We're still talking here, hot wiring your healing. Jesus, I want to go back to the very first page as I wrap up tonight. There, there I was up to page four. Then I have some verses here from the children's Bible on from Romans 4, 17. But just going back, sharing my heart again, how I got to the place that we're at, at tonight here. I have had many people contact me who are in very serious situations where their health is concerned. A lot of pain, mobility issues, little or no help for medical resources. People desperate and ready to give up the fight for health. They need immediate solutions and are not able for various reasons to put in hours of time listening to videos or reading materials on divine healing. These were my, this was my conversation with myself as I was thinking about all of you. So I asked the Lord, Lord, what can be done to help these people? And he said, you have to hotwire healing. I asked him, how? He said, 
by speaking my creative word. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. So just sitting around and saying the word, you can read it, but get some verses down on the inside of you or the ones that are in there. Start just pulling them up and saying them. Hallelujah. All these conditions and things, and some are still coming in. But as I said, some of them are in similar categories, and I've, I've grouped them together as much as I can. When I do the declarations, I can't mention each thing individually, but I will touch on the category. Back, uh, eyes, ears, limbs, respiratory problems, intestinal problems in general. The big general areas we're going to address by speaking the word to them. And as best as I can tell, I want to strike while the iron's hot. So at all possible, see how my day goes tomorrow. I'm going to be meditating, praying over these things, the declarations, getting this together better so that it's more cohesive and helpful for you. And uh, tomorrow night, I'd like to seriously just spend some time maybe doing a little review about Mark 11. Be good for you to read those verses before then. Do some review in Mark 11. We can have what we say and then go right to it, speaking God's word over your condition. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you tonight. Oh, Give them eyes to see, Father. Ears to hear. Oh, Father, it isn't doing what Brother Caps does. It's not, not following some man. But, Father, we only follow what he did because he did what you said to do. That's what we want to do. Do the sayings of Jesus. And so, Father, oh, I pray that they'll take this truth that they can have what they say to develop confidence in their own authority. And Father, that them speaking the creative word can bring to pass the healing they desire. And Father, for that fully persuadedness to come to them as they continue to learn the skill of hot wiring their healing. And Lord, I thank you for it this night. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you all. See you tomorrow evening at all, at all possible. Be praying, would you? You saw all of the health conditions that I posted. Just pray in the spirit for this whole group. Because we want to... We want to lift the whole group up. We want to see all of us coming out into that life of wellness.